This video summarizes the project that Jahir Monroy Camarero has been working on in support of Dr. Greg Baron Gafford at the University of Arizona in Biosphere. Specifically, Jahir was tasked with redesigning a soil monitoring, data logging, and irrigation control system developed for research related to agriculture and photovoltaics at Biosphere. Before I continue, I want to clarify that although I acted as an advisor and am narrating this in English to memorialize progress, it's Jahir's work that got this project to where it is today. Regarding the installation at Biosphere, this is what we started with. This is a Raspberry Pi that is wired to a suite of Taro sensors for approximating soil moisture. This system is meant to control a suite of solenoids for controlling irrigation in experimental agricultural plots. Respective data is captured by a commercial data logger. Unfortunately, we had some difficulty obtaining documentation regarding the programming, installation, and irrigation thresholds for this system. This sometimes happens in venues where students graduate and move on to new positions and made operation and maintenance of this somewhat challenging for ongoing research. In response, Jahir was tasked with developing and documenting a more user-friendly system that could be more easily operated and managed moving forward. Driving the original installation is this Raspberry Pi computer. This hardware is analytically powerful, but frankly a little more complicated and power-hungry for the project's modest needs. In this regards, we suggested that Jahir explore more efficient alternatives like the Arduino Uno. Arduinos are much less expensive than Raspberry Pis and much easier to program for environmental monitoring thanks to the thousands of libraries already developed by the open source community. With a basic understanding of C++, these libraries can be implemented and modified for a researcher's own particular needs. To facilitate the same, Jahir started exploring how to couple an Arduino Uno with an SD camera card data logger for writing time data to a comma delimited text file that can be opened in Excel. This is a low-power, low-cost, efficient alternative relative to expensive commercial hardware. In this regards, it opens up low-cost opportunities for venues that may not have the resources for a formal data logger, which can cost thousands of dollars. This system costs about $40 to put together. While exploring data logging, we discovered that Taro sensors support SDI-12 communication protocols, for which libraries have already been developed for microcontrollers like our Arduino Uno. This means the Arduino Uno can communicate with and log data reported by the Taro sensors at Biosphere. Once Jahir had written a simple program to log data and communicate with Taro sensors, we started testing different hardware configurations that might support a field installation. This was required since Arduino Unos have some physical power and memory limitations that didn't meet all of our needs for a formal installation at Biosphere. We started with an Adafruit Feather MO Wi-Fi board that we could use to log data to the Internet of Things via a free IoT platform known as Adafruit I.O. The Arduino IDE can be used to program the board in much the same way Jahir used it to program his Arduino Uno. For data backup, we couple the Feather Wi-Fi board with a Feather Ada Logger, which can write environmental data to an SD card. However, we ran into challenges resulting from this combination not being able to both log data locally and also communicate with the Internet of Things simultaneously. After consulting with online forums for a remedy, we decided to migrate our code to an ESP32, which is another Wi-Fi enabled microcontroller. The recommendation worked, and after dozens of tests and tweaks, we ended up with a system that logs soil moisture data from our four Taro sensors to an SD card, posts that same data to the Internet of Things, controls four relays that can engage and disengage irrigation control valves, or solenoids, and allows us to modify thresholds and engage hardware remotely from a cell phone. We also developed a signal bus that will be able to host up to 24 sensors at a future date. The original system is now broken out into two junction boxes. The first houses are relays and a new power supply for managing our sensors and solenoids. And the second box houses our microcontroller and signal bus, which our Taro sensors will attach to. And this is just a quick snapshot of the system wiring put together by Jahir. This diagram is dated in that the shown microcontroller needs to be updated from a Feather MO Wi-Fi to an ESP32 S3. In addition, we eliminated the 5-volt regulator and are powering all the sensors directly off 12 volts, 
which is within operational guidelines and will shield our signals from potential voltage drops given the large number of sensors we plan on working with in the future. Breaking the original system out into two boxes is going to make the system much easier to manage and maintain moving forward. We'll now conclude this summary with a demonstration of the system capabilities. Yep. El 1, ¿no? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. A ver, lo voy a apagar. Yep. El 4. El 4. Es el 4, sí. Ajá, solo cuando está grabando datos mm. es que se tarda. Yeah, you're kind of like on a, on a delay. You gotta Ajá. wait for something else to, to trigger it, for it to check the flag. Uh -huh. Right. It's working. And they're the right ones too. That was number one, right? Yeah. Yep. This is the data of the valves and this is the data of the sensors. Sensor one. 6 607 p.m. Right. 609. So it was two minutes ago. So it's writing data in the in nice. the internet. Nice. And here is the record. Oh, it's beautiful. Right on. So although the design and programming has been completed, there are aspects of this project that are not captured in this summary, including controlling thresholds for irrigation triggers, modifying those thresholds remotely using a phone, and bench testing with solenoids attached to relays and the full suite of 24 Taro sensors for an extended period of time prior to deployment. In addition, hardware is needed to properly install this in the field to include T-posts and metal zip ties. Finally, some error handling also needs to be developed to eliminate the potential for signal noise that can impact recorded values and falsely trigger solenoids. Having said that, Jahir has made significant progress in determining appropriate hardware configurations, programming and wiring the overall algorithm, and debugging hardware issues like incompatible components and bad power supplies. To avoid challenges like the ones encountered with the original installation, Jahir informs me he will be developing documentation so that progress may continue towards a formal install at Biosphere. Thanks, and we hope this summary has been helpful.